Hey, what's up guys? So I'm excited today because I'm gonna walk you guys through my production process for producing a Neo Soul instrumental track from start to finish. So I'm gonna show you guys how I come up with my progressions, how I come up with bass lines, melodies, etc., and I'm gonna dive into the production process. So without further ado, let's dive right into logic. All right, I'm gonna slap these headphones on. Let's get started. All right, so I like to start out around 80 BPM, somewhere in that area. Today I've got my session set to 82 BPM. Um, so yeah, let's just hit it. I'm gonna play some stuff on the piano and we will see what happens. So just so you guys know, the piano sound I'm using is the Steinway D from East West, but you guys can really use any piano sound you like and you're gonna get a decent sound with this. You can always EQ it later on, which I end up doing to pretty much everything I make anyway, regardless of what sound I'm using. All right, so I'm going to start with a little progression from my Instagram, just from popular demand. Um, a lot of people really like this one. And uh, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, it's at Noah Kelman. I post a lot of unique content there that you won't see on my YouTube. So be sure to go on there and click follow. All right, so I'm just going to lay down the keyboard part real quick. Here we go. Cool, and I'm just going to capture that by hitting Shift R in Logic, and let's see if that loops well. I'm just going to hit Command R to duplicate that. Let's check out the loop. Cool, so that should loop pretty well. Next up, let's come up with a bass sound. Um, so let's see, I think I have a bass set up here. Cool, yeah, so I'm using Contact, and I'm using the Scarby pre-bass amped deep. I just like this as a starting point. I usually end up running it through some effects processing anyway to get a different sound, but let's see if we can come up with something here that's cool. Now, uh, one thing to actually keep in mind when making a bass line for a Neo Soul track is that in a lot of ways, you don't always want to just focus on hitting the roots. You might actually want to come up with kind of a cool melody that can work as its own part. Cool, I like that. Um, one thing I'm noticing is that we're having some sustain issues here, so I'm gonna hit Command J, join these two regions, and let's just see if we can fix that real quick in the piano. Okay, actually scratch the sustain thing, that sounds totally fine. Okay, so actually I think joining the regions may have solved that problem or it might have just been a glitch in where we were starting and stopping based on the sustain markers in that region. But hey, I'm happy camper, it works now, it sounds good. All right, so let's say now, that let's say this is our kind of verse section. We're gonna want something that's a bit more built up for the chorus. So I'm just gonna keep the progression the same. I'm going to duplicate this but let's actually lay down a different bass line for the chorus. Cool, cool, I think that works. So what I did was on the chorus bass line, I just focused in a bit more on hitting the roots and changing up the groove a bit so that it feels different, feels like it has a bit more motion. And that's all gonna come together more once we start adding in some drums. So just as I'm getting started, I like to pull up Ultra Beat, one of Logic's built-in drum synthesizers. And I usually just pull up the Boutique 808, just a normal 
808 sample pack. Um, and I'm actually going to shut off this reverb that comes built in here. Um, let's take it from there. Let's just come up with a groove. We can play it on the keyboard. If you guys have drum pads, you can do it there. So for the drums, I like to just use Ultra Beats Boutique 808 patch. Um, these are just your classic 808 samples. And if you guys use Logic, you're probably already very well familiar with Ultra Beat. But for me, this is a great starting point. I usually end up changing the samples or at the very least putting a bunch of EQ to make things sound different. Um, but let's just take it from here. I like to get started playing a beat with this Boutique 808. So if you guys have drum pads, that's awesome. I'm a keyboard player. I always have just learned to play MIDI drums on the keys, so that's what I'm about to do. So let's just see what we can come up with here. Cool, so that just works as like a decent starting point. I'm happy with some of the grooves in there. Let's go back and see if we just clean this up a little bit. So obviously I changed up the groove a bit for the chorus. I switched to cymbal. The cymbal was a little bit too harsh, so I switched to the open hat. So let's go with the open hat there. I'm gonna replace bar one with this bar. I think here I'm going to replace this as well. Cool. Alright, so next up I'm going to put each of these drums in an individual track um, just so we have a bit more control over the sounds. Now normally I might actually replace all the samples but for the sake of time today I'm just going to do it like this. So let's mute this first one. This will be um, our backup of the full take just in case we need it. And then let's make this top one the hat and we'll, we'll just make it the hat and symbol. Mute everything else. I think that's pretty much everything. All right, we got some toms. Yeah, we got some toms in there. Cool. And then let's make these, let's make this one the snare. So I'll mute all the kick. I will mute, these are snares. I'll mute all this stuff. Um, cool. I think I saw something else down low there. What's this? I don't know what that is. It's nothing. All right, and then at the bottom here, this is just going to be the kick. That's easy. And we'll mute that guy. And the way I'm muting, by the way, is I have it set up in Logic in my key commands so that M mutes a region or a MIDI note. It just makes it really fast and easy for me to work without having to delete things. Cool. So I want to hear this kick a little bit more. I'm just going to really quickly put kind of a lazy EQ on here and just bring some of the lows out. Cool. All right, this is working as a nice skeleton for our track. Feels good. The chorus switches up and groove a bit. Cool. Awesome. All right guys, so really quickly, now obviously it was pretty easy for me being a keyboard player to just lay down that 
piano track right there. And uh, I want to shout out two things really quick. So number one, if you guys want to learn more about how to actually create progressions like that, I did just release a video about that. I'll put the link in the description and I'll make sure to put a little card in the top of the video so you can just click that for more info. And also guys, if you want it to be even easier or if you just want some material to work with, I also very recently just released my Neo Soul sample pack, um, which is based on my 20 Neo Soul improv exercises. And it comes with actually MIDI, not only of my keyboard parts with the licks and the voicings and everything, but also just chord pads, bass lines, and also drum grooves that you can import all into Logic as well. So if you want to work more on this stuff and just be able to drag and drop different parts, be sure to check that out. All right, so next up, I want to get a little bit more of a vibe happening here. This sounds super MIDI right now. Um, it doesn't sound super professional. Why don't we just add something, some kind of a Rhodes that gives this some character, some personality. So I'm going to open up a new software instrument. I'm going to open up Contact again. I don't know why I've been using Contact 5. This time I'll use Current Contact, which I believe is 6. And let's see what we can come up with here. Um, let's go back to the Scarby series here. Uh, yeah, Scarby Vintage Keys is great. Um, I like this. Let's see how this Breakfast in New York pad sounds. Cool. It's got a little tiny bit of pitch wavering. I like that a lot. Um, let's see how this sounds when we just lay down the chords plain and simple. I'm going to get that click on. Alright, so for me that already added so much. Cool, I'm liking how that sounds. Now let's see what else we can do here. Alright, I want this bass to feel a little bit deeper. I'm not loving how it's sounding right now. It's not bad, it's not bad, but let's do a little EQ. And now some of my favorite plugins are the Fab Filter plugins. I kind of feel like I could pretty much mix anything just using those plugins. So definitely be sure to check out those plugins. I don't actually have any association with them whatsoever, though I wouldn't mind if they started giving me stuff for free in the future. That's that UFAB filter. But um, yeah, so check out this plugin right here. This is the Fab Filter Pro Q. So I'm going to bring out some of the lows. I'm going to shoot for around 80 here. And let's see how that's working with the kick. So, all right, let's get into some light mixing stuff here. We want the bass and kick to leave some space for each other. So I'm actually going to bring down the bass a bit around 50 and leave that space for the kick. Let's see how this sounds. Cool. So that's pretty basic EQing right there. We're just taking out a bit of a frequency in the bass that's going to interfere with the kick and we're putting it into the kick drum. See how those are working together. All right, cool, not bad. So the bass is also just a little loud. Just hang it around there for now. So I'm gonna actually take the volume of all the tracks down a little bit more to give us some headroom on the stereo out. I want a little bit more volume on my piano. Let's just bring that up to zero. All right, let's add some kind of a synth now and see how that works to bring this together, give this some atmosphere. So let's come up with a pad to use. I'm gonna open up, actually I'm gonna go into Arturia here and I'm gonna use the Profit V2. Love this plugin, and I kinda love the patch that it opens on. 11 brass. I might take some of the attack off. See how this just sits. 
Instagram. All right, something a little bit more held like that. Cool, I like that. Let's grab that second half there. I'm just going to quantize it really quick. Quantize it to the eighth note. Let's grab, where was it, these last four bars or so. So maybe we'll just save that for the chorus. Bring it down a little bit. So I'm still not happy with this bass. I just want to feel it more. So I'm going to I'm going to cheat here a little bit. I'm going to turn off the EQ we had and I'm going to go to waves and I'm going to use a plugin called where is it? Um our bass. Now I think this is actually a stereo patch probably set up through contacts so I'll use stereo. Cool. So that just really added in some frequencies around 80. Let's bring that down the intensity a little bit. Cool, I dig it. By the way guys, just a heads up, the headphones I'm using are the Bayer Dynamic DT1770 Pros. And um, I did a ton of research to decide which ones to buy, ended up getting these and have to say that I love them. So if you are interested in picking up a pair, please consider using my affiliate link which is in the description. Um, it really helps me out guys when you do that because I get a little tiny commission on the sale. So consider checking that out, all of those little commissions help me have the time and freedom to keep making video tutorials just like this one for you guys. All right, so before we continue any further, let's come up with a little melody of some sort. I wanna use kind of like a chilled out round synth, something that is not too abrasive. So maybe I'll just kind of make one really quick using Massive. Um, and the only reason I'm choosing Massive is just because I'm quick with it. Where is it? That's, a, that's the next question. Um, I'm in the wrong spot. Here we go. Native Instruments, massive. All right, so we don't want that kind of wave. Let's just start with a sine wave. Cool. Let's just see how that sounds just to start off. So I'm going to try a melody now that I've messed around for a second. Cool. That'll work for now. Add a little delay to this. Gives a little bit of space adding that reverb. Normally I would honestly probably use not a built-in reverb like this, but for the sake of time, I think this is gonna work. It saves us some processing power as well. Sounds good to me. All 
All right, cool. So this piano sound is not working for me yet. Um, what I did here was I actually had an EQ on here, makes it a little brighter, brightened it up. Here you can hear the difference. Kind of brings it out in the mix a bit. And then I put the CLA-2A compressor from Waves. I actually love this compressor just as a coloring device. Um, you can see it's really not compressing at all. I might make it do the tiniest bit here, but it's not really about the compressing here. It's just about giving it some more volume and a bit of color. Cool. So one thing that I have not been doing is naming my tracks. But one thing I do love to do is not only name my tracks, but also color them. So as the session starts to get more complicated, be sure to do that with my personal way of organizing. Sometimes I like to just get into it, move as quickly as possible, not name anything, but it always comes back to bite me later on. So if you're a person who is a bit more patient than me when writing stuff, take the time, name your tracks, color your tracks, um, assign colors that you always know to specific instruments. It's going to really speed up your process. So I'm just going to do that really quick here. You guys, you guys can steal my colors if you want. I like to have piano blue. I like the bass dark purple. Sometimes I'll make the melody green. It's already green, so that works. But for some reason, I like the less green green, something a little bit closer to, to blue. And also, just a little trick, once you color the track, Option Shift C will make the regions in that track the same color as the track itself. And this was what our, our roads, I believe. So I'm gonna make this one a bit more of a purple color. What's this? This was our profit. I like to make my synths orange. And then these are all of our drums. I'm just gonna leave those as is for now. Um, okay, here we go. So now let's get our drums working a little better. I'm gonna hit Command Shift D, put them into a summing stack. And just because this video is getting a little long, I'm not gonna do a ton of intricate processing here. I'm just gonna put a compressor on the full, the full bus. So for now, I'm just gonna use the waves H compressor. Cool. Honestly, that sounds pretty good right out of the box. I just want to hear it pumping a little bit. I usually like to turn analog off because you end up getting some kind of noise in the recording that you don't really need. All right, so next up what I would do is I would duplicate this verse section. And I would, actually, I'll probably just duplicate the chorus again, just for the purposes of this video. And what I want to do is, of course, we want to make something change on the chorus. We probably want a, a new melody and even a new instrumental timbre. So here we've got our verse melody. Let's just see what we come up with. I'm going to go and open up, uh, where would it be? It's a Logic Synth, so it would be right here. Retro Synth. All right, again, for the sake of time, I'm just not going to mess with this too much, and I'm just going to come up with a melody here. So, not my best melody in the world, but I'll take it for now. So 
So I'm going to now make a bit of reverb here. So instead of the space designer thing here, I am just going to, you know, let's go to bus one. Let's get rid of space designer. Let's get rid of this EQ. And let's add one of my personal favorite reverbs. It's one of the most affordable and best at the same time, Valhalla Vintage Reverb. So we'll just leave the factory setting, probably turn down the length a little bit. And you know what? I want something that's got a bit of a vibes feel, and by that I mean vibraphone, something a little bit metallic. Let's see what we've got in Alchemy. I'm going to search Vibra uh, vibes, maybe just vibes. Bell like lock vox vibes. That'll work for now. And I'm just gonna double this for now. All right, so I'm gonna lay down a little solo now on another piano patch, but I'm gonna make this one sound a little bit different, maybe by adding a little distortion, and I'm gonna use Sound Toys Decapitator. Back to the chorus. Just to close out our track, then I'm going to put all right, so here just to close out our track, I'm just going to put one little end section that's just the piano and the roads. Maybe we'll just do it. Oh, okay. And let's just take the bass from here. Cool, and we have more or less got us a track that is working. Now, obviously, if I was not doing this really quickly in real time for a YouTube video, I would take a lot more time to craft every single sound I was using, and I would take more time to mix this, but just to show you guys how I build a track from bottom to top, this was, just, this was actually a really fun experiment for me, but I hope this gives you guys a good sense of how I build it, how I come up with the progression, um, the different instrumentations I tend to use and how I build the sound of it, as well as a few mixing tricks and tips here and there. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you want to hear how the track actually sounds a bit more finished with me putting a bit more time into it, you can actually download the full track for free, and that will be at jazzpianoconcepts.com. Sign up for the email list, and you will automatically get emailed a link where you can download it. All right, guys, as always, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click like. And if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe and clicking the little bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss any more videos just like this one. And again, of course, my little product shout out. If you want to be able to just drag and drop some of my own piano riffs and some of my bass lines and drum parts into your own Logic sessions or whatever DAW you're using, be sure to check out the Neo Soul sample pack that I just recently released. Alright guys, thanks so much and I will see you next time.